Now coming to management principles. When we talk about management principles, there are basically two approaches. There are two people who've developed principles. One is Henry Fuel. He's developed 14 principles of management, right? Which are generally these principles. They are applicable for the general administration, right? And there was there's another person that is. Taylor's uh, principle, he's basically worked on scientific management, okay, and these princi and uh, Taylor's principles are basically meant for, they are more for the operational or supervisory level of management, right. Coming to Fjord's principle, first principle when we talk about is division of work and specialization. Now, as an organization grows in size, as an organization grows in size, it becomes important to divide the entire work into smaller pieces, Right, and each piece of the work is going to be handled by a specialist or a trained employee. Now, if a specialist or a trained employee is handling only his part of the job, right, he will be able to do that job in the most effective and efficient manner. We take the example, I think I have taken this example before as well. We take the example of uh, your class bulletin board. Right? I do that as a teacher in my class, right? If I have to design the uh, class board. Right now, a border has to be put up. That is something a person who's good at artwork will be able to do it really well. Right, so I give it to a person who's good at that. Right, then some written material is required. All right, a person who has a good handwriting will be given the task of writing that material, and a person who has a niche for I mean, who's creative, who's cre who has a who has a niche for creative writing, who can write well on his own, he'll be given the task of actually giving the material. To the person who's going to pen it down on the paper, right? Then some caricatures and some other uh, drawings and everything which is to be made. That again is going to be given to the person who's good at who has who has uh, who has a poncho for drawing, right? Then then a person who uh, has a sense of putting up the board. I mean, kya cheez kaha lagni chahiye, kaise achha lag, the basic aesthetic sense, who has a good aesthetic sense, I'm going to give him the task of putting up the board. Ki kaun si caption kaha jayegi, kaun si drawing kaha jayegi, right? Heading hum kaha lagayenge, kaise lagayenge, right? And neatly, jo ki mera plastic sheet uske upar pin up kar sake. So what I have, what have I done? I'm explaining it to you at a very micro level. What have I done? I have divided the entire work of putting up the class board into smaller tasks wherein each task is being taken care of by a specialist. And what is my end result that I'm going to get a beautiful board done, right? At the least possible cost. Okay? Cost kya hoga yahan pe? I'm not talking about paise ki tabaad nahi kare yahan pe. Time bhi kam lagega. Why? Because they are good at that work so they are going to take less time. Clear? So, second principle is authority and responsibility. What is authority? Authority is the right to give orders and obtain obedience. Okay? It is the right, I repeat, it is the right to give orders and obtain obedience. Ki maine kaha hai, to ye mana jana chahiye. Because I am the principal of the school, that's why whatever I am saying is right and you must do it. This is authority. Right? What is responsibility? Responsibility is obligation to perform the assigned duties on time. Because the principal has said it, so I must do it. Because the principal has said it, I must do it. It becomes my responsibility. Now, according to Fjord, there has to be a parity between authority and responsibility. If you are making a person responsible for a task, right, without giving him sufficient amount of authority, that per, that that worker is going to turn ineffective. That worker is going to be turned ineffective, right. So therefore, if you are assigning responsibility of a task, he must be given sufficient amount. He must be given sufficient amount of authority for him to be effective and efficient. For example, if the production manager is to achieve a target of manufacturing about 10,000 units in a month, right? It is his responsibility to achieve this target, right? But if he is not given the authority to file for requisition of tools and material, 
right then he is going to turn ineffective he will not be able to achieve his target on time because every time for that he will have to achieve uh, he will have to approach his top manager so if you are giving him this kind of a responsibility you must give him the required amount of authority so that he can make a requisition for raw material and tools at the desired time similarly like we say responsibility without authority has no meaning similarly authority without responsibility is also meaningless it may be misused it may be misused if you have given the authority to a sales uh, sales manager to given uh, to give a credit period of 60 days ठीक है अगर उसको रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं दी है कि विद इन दिस सिक्सटी डेज अगर पैसे आ जाने चाहिए राइट इफ यू हैव गिवन हिम सेल्स मैनेजर रिक्वायर्स टू ऑफर अ क्रेडिट पीरियड फॉर सिक्सटी डेज टू नेगोशिएट अ डील विद द बायर ही और शी शुड नॉट बी गिवन दी अथॉरिटी टू ऑफर अ क्रेडिट पीरियड ऑफ हंड्रेड डेज ही मे मिस यूज दिस अथॉरिटी सो देर हैज टू बी जस्ट अ राइट कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ अथॉरिटी एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अगर किसी को रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दी है तो उसके साथ उसको सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ अथॉरिटी भी दी जानी चाहिए सो दैट इज एबल टू कैरी आउट दैट टास्क इन द मोस्ट मैनर अनदर थिंग अथॉरिटी कैन बी डेलीगेटेड बट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी यू कैन नेवर एब्जॉल्व योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम दी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नेक्स्ट डिसिप्लिन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड डिसिप्लिन यू मस्ट है being in school you must have heard of this word umpteen number of times discipline it means obedience obedience to organizational rules and employment agreement which are necessary for the working of an organization now discipline requires good superiors at all levels clear and fair agreements judicious application of penalties when we say discipline we say obedience of organizational rules and employment agreement right let us talk of a situation wherein uh, the workers okay of an organization they have agreed that they are not going to charge any extra money for overtime in an organization to help the organization come out of a particular loss and in return of which the organization has promised the day it starts to make profits it is going to give 5% of its profits to its workers as bonus it is going to distribute 5% of its profits to the workers as bonus now the principle of discipline would require that if the workers are abiding by these terms and conditions then the management must also abide by these terms and conditions that is when they start earning profits they must give 5% of their profits to the workers it has to be not only not only for the workers but also for the management then comes unity of command now principle of unity of command means that each worker must receive orders only from one boss because if i am receiving orders from two bosses okay i am going to be in a fix the worker is going to be in a fix ki kiska kaam main pehle karu बॉस ए बोलेगा पहले मेरा काम करो बॉस बी बोलेगा पहले मेरा काम करो बट वॉट अबाउट द इम्प्लॉई फॉर हिम बोथ आर एट पार ए एंड बी आर एट पार राइट सो टू अवॉइड दिस काइंड ऑफ अ सिचुएशन फेयर सेट दैट ईच एम्प्लॉई मस्ट रिसीव डिरेक्शन फ्रॉम वन बॉस ओनली क्लियर देन कम्स द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ यूनिटी ऑफ डायरेक्शन this principle states that all the units of an organization all the units of an organization should be working in the same direction that is towards the accomplishment of organizational goals for example if let's say an uh, organization or a company is manufacturing motorcycles and cars right so what these two products okay they should be taken up as two different units they should be taken up as two different units having their own goals and objectives right but at the same times they both the units should be moving in the same direction that is towards the accomplishment of the goals and objectives of the organization as a whole right then subordination of individual interest to general This is a very important point. At all points of time, you know, the 
whatever decisions, all decisions that are being taken, they should be taken keeping the organization's interest in mind. They should be taken keeping the organization's interest in mind. That means organizational interest is always going to take precedence over individual interest. In case of strikes, you know, what I know is strike pe chale jate hai, workers who have demands rakhte hai. Now, if the workers are interested in getting higher salaries by doing the minimum work, right, this is in the interest of the individual worker. But is it in the interest of the organization? No, it's not in the interest of the organization and hence this demand of the workers should not be accepted, right? Only those demands of the workers will be accepted which are in the interest of the organization. We are talking about the organization. We are not saying which should be in the interest of the management. We are talking about we are talking about the benefit of the organ, benefit of the organization. So individual interest will always there should always be subordination of individual interest to general. Pehle hum organization ke interest ka sochenge, uske baad hum individual interest ka sochenge. But iska matlab ye nahi hai that you know a man it is a job of the manager that in the pursuance or in the pursuance of the organizational objectives he must make sure that he is able to help you know the employees achieve their own personal goals when we talk about their own personal goals meaning their social objectives of being recognized for the good work being done career growth objectives that is wherever it is possible if he is working really well then to give him promotions and recognition at the right time <clears throat> so individual there should always be subordination of individual interest to general interest next remuneration of employees when we talk about remuneration of employees it's important that the employees of an organization the they are being given salaries which are just and equitable just and just means he gets what he deserves right the kind of the services that he is rendering right he should be compensated for the services that he is rendering to the organization and when we say equitable just and equitable equitable means he should be given a competitive salary meaning if a production manager is being in our company is being given a salary of let's say about 2 lakh rupees per month right it should be a competitive salaries that means in the same industry in other companies also the production managers are being given the same salary or maybe less right so he should be given just and equitable salary next this is a very very important topic centralization and decentralization centralization means retention of authority at the top level of management retention of authority at the top level of management meaning all decisions are taken up by the top level of the management only be it a big decision or a small routine decision all decisions are taken by the top level of management and decentralization of authority means delegation of authority at all levels of organization you give the desired level of authority to all the three levels of management that means top level management is only going to retain the authority to frame the broad uh, objectives and goals of the organization for framing the policies of the organization middle level management okay is going to have the authority for translation of those objectives and goals into the work which is required to be done right and the supervisory level of management will also have the required level of authority now in any organization there shouldn't be a complete centralization or complete decentralization fiol says that organization should have a balance between complete centralization and decentralization like i just said that the major decisions that is of setting goals and objectives of an organization or formulation of plans and policies should always be retained by the top level management right <clears throat> but there can be a policy for decentralization or uh, for the activities of routine work such as purchase of raw material assignment of targets to workers etc these can be decentralized then scalar chain we talked about in the beginning of the chapter we talked about a certain hierarchy that is prevalent in an organization right here also scalar chain means that we must follow the hierarchy right here if i'm taking this example in an organization 
there are two lines of authorities we can see. There are two lines of authorities. That is under A, we have two lines of authority. In one line of authority, we have B, C and D. And the other line of authority, we have E, F and G. So if A wants to communicate something to D, A will, tell, uh, A will communicate to D, B to C, C to D. Similarly, if D wants to communicate something to A, so it is D to C, C to B and then to A. Under no circumstances in the regular affairs can D approach A directly. Right? In the sim in same way, A will communicate to E, E to F and F to G. And similarly, G to F, F to E and A to E to A. Right? Now, it is only in case of an emergency can D or G directly approach E. Now, a question arises if D and E, they are working at a horizontal level. They are working at the same level of organization. If they want to talk to one another under normal circumstances, it is D to C, C to B, B to A, A to E, E to F and F to G and then again the reverse process. But in case of emergency, another route, a direct route can also be established between them where D will directly talk to G. This route is called as gang plank. This is called as gang plank. It's a kind of a gap okay, that has been filled. So D to G. This is called gang plank but this is only in case of an emergency that this kind of a uh, technique can be used. This can be, this technique can be used. This is a shorter route basically that has been provided. Then the next principle comes order. Order ko hum ek line mein ever define kare. It will be a place for everything and everything in its place. Right? You enter a bank. Right? Aapke paas jahan pe aapne cash jama karana hai. Alag counter. Right? Jahan pe aapko pain slips milengi. Woh alag counter hai. Jahan pe aapne FDs karani hai. Woh alag counter hai. Right? Lockers ke liye alag counter hai. What is this? This is application of principle of order. That you enter an organization and you know that a place for everything and everything in its place. ठीक है हर एक चीज का एक काउंटर है और वो आपको वहीं पे मिलेगा ना why is this principle what is the uh, importance of uh, this principle because if uh, if there is a fixed place for everything right then it is there there will be no hindrance in the activities of business right this will lead to increased productivity and efficiency next comes your equity equity means that Justice in the organization. Everyone is to be treated as equal irrespective of their sex, religion, belief, language, nationality and caste etc. This will ensure loyalty and devotion and there will be cordial relationships between the managers. Right? In uh, nowadays, gone other days, you know, when people used to have objections in employing uh, people from a particular religion. Now, if you look at MNCs, you have uh, people from uh, all religions, people from all uh, religions working in the same organization and everyone is treated as equal. Then comes the next principle that is stability of personnel. According to this uh, principle, you know, each and every worker who is working at a particular position should be allowed to work at that position for a sufficient period of time so that he is able to acquaint himself with the, uh, with the he is able to acquaint himself with the job and is able to specialize in that particular job so that he is able to do that job in the most effective and efficient manner. If there is a problem of labor turnover if people, you know, go on, if you, if you if you keep shuffling your employees from one position to another and on very frequent basis, then he will never be able to specialize in doing a particular job, right? And as a result, he is not going to become an effective and efficient worker. So for him to become an effective and efficient worker, it is important that he works at a particular job for a stipulated period of time, gains expertise in doing that job and specializes in doing that job. Then initiative. When we talk of initiative, it means that to take, uh, uh, to uh, initiate an action, to initiate action without motivation. Right? 
it is a job of a manager to encourage initiative on part of the workers how are you going to do that manager must invite suggestions i mean if you have uh, implemented a new policy in the organization so rather than just point blankly uh, you know uh, implementing it in the organization unke upar thopne se acha hai when you are going to implement it you must discuss it with the workers they may come up with suggestions which are more creative than what you have thought of right and once you have discussed with it you must make sure that all good suggestions should be incorporated right so then your workers are going to be feeling as a part of the organization they are going to be feeling a part of the organization and they will be more than happy they will be more than happy to abide by the policies which are going to be laid in the organization because they were a part of the whole team you know when these policies were being formulated they should be encouraged to come up with new suggestions and innovative suggestions last principle is esprit de corps which means unity is strength at all points of time manager it is the job of the manager to inculcate the feeling of we instead of i all people working in an organization as we said that they all are working towards one single motive that is accomplishment of the organizational goals ek single motive hai unke different sub objectives different honge but all these sub objectives are also directed towards achievement of the organizational goals right so it is important that it is important that workers should feel that management and workers they are one they are one they are not two different entities they are not two different entities and once this feeling of being one comes in you know then the problem of these trade unions you know and strikes and lockouts is completely not going to be there at all so a manager must inculcate the feeling of us instead of 